Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militang Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militang Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Samsara Dava Nalamita Loka Tranaya Karunya Ganaganatvam Praptasya Kayana Gunana Vasya Vande Guru Shri Charana Sangsara Dava Nalamita Loka Tranaya Karunya Ganaganatvam Praptasya Kayana Gunarnavasya Vande Guru Shri Charanara Mahaprabhu Kirtana Nritya Gita Vaditra Madhyan Manasura Sena Romancha Kam Pashruta Ranga Bhajo Vande Guru Shri Chara Naravindam Mahaprabhu Kirtana Nritya Gita Varitra Madhyan Manasura Sena Romancha Kam Pashruta Ranga Bhajo Vande Guru Shri Charanaravindam 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 Prachodaya 
So those are our morning prayers. They should be sung just at sunrise. And as I explained in the last uh, recording, the downward going portion is before the sun comes up, it's contemplative. And then the middle portion is just when the sun is crossing the horizon. Then once it comes up, actually, then we do the ascending portion. So it's a very, very beautiful prayer, very beautiful experience. And the whole point is to glorify the guru. So let me go through the words real quick, and then I'll explain what I'm talking about. Guru Pranam, Om Ajnana. Huh? Ajnana means <laughs> my eyes were blinded by duality, <laughs> Timirandasya. Huh? My mind is full of duality, so I can't even see the reality in front of me. <laughs> Instead, I have some ideas stuck in my head, and I project that on the world. And that's what I see. Huh? So I'm suffering. Jnananjana Shalakaya. But he, the guru, opened my eyes with the torchlight of not knowledge exactly, but realization. Jnana. Okay? We're not talking about ordinary knowledge. That's vidya, book learning. No, we're talking about realization, and the next line confirms that. Chakshur Ulmilitam Nyena. He directly sees the truth. So, therefore, Tasma, Sri Gurave Namaha, I offer my respectful obeisances to the Guru. Now, who is the Guru? <laughs> Guru is a principle, not a person. Guru is the indwelling knowledge of the self. Everybody is the self. And everybody knows the self, too. Because if I ask you, do you exist? You say, yes, of course I do. Well, how do you know? And we may go through some layers of misunderstanding and indirection, but it's ultimately because I'm aware of my awareness. Awareness of awareness is Brahman. That is the feature, that is the specific quality of Brahman. In fact, it's the only quality of Brahman, because Brahman is without qualities and so on. We've discussed this at great length. But now, this is directed not toward the, the one who is realized, 
but who is unrealized. Uh, Agnana. So he needs a clue. Where's he going to get that clue? He can't hear the guru within. Chaita guru. Or he wouldn't be in trouble. So because he is in trouble, because he is in ignorance, he has to approach a spiritual master, someone in the body who has seen, who has realized this self. And that person can remove the ignorance that causes the bondage. How? Because he has seen the truth. He's seen it. You can't convince him otherwise. It's his experience. Huh? If I taste sweet rice, uh, sweet rice is a very nice kheer. Huh? It's a very nice preparation. And when it's made right with a little bit of camphor and black pepper, oh my God, there's nothing better. And roast the rice, dry roast the rice a little bit before you, oh, it's just amazing. So once having tasted kheer, can anybody convince me that it's bad? Absolutely not. I know. I've tasted it. So in the same way, one who has tasted Brahman, even for an instant, knows this is the truth. Now, if he cannot hold on to that vision, maybe he needs some help. And so the guru principle may manifest outwardly through a person, a book, a video, even a cat or dog or a bird. Uh, nature herself can be a guru. And as we'll see, she is the ultimate guru. So the next prayer. The sangsara the endless round of births and deaths is compared to a forest fire that is burning out of control. Nobody wants birth and death. Nobody wants to suffer. Everybody just wants pleasure and enjoyment, isn't it? But still, these things happen. Why? Uh, because this karma is like a fire that's burning out of control. But the spiritual master is like a cloud. No ordinary um, human effort can put out a forest fire. Uh, maybe you can kind of control it or kind of, you know, limit its spread, but you can't really put it out. There's not enough water available. But if a big storm cloud comes and dumps a downpour on it, that will do the job. So the spiritual master, the actual bona fide spiritual master, is uh, like a rain cloud, full of rain, dark blue rain clouds, ready to drench everything with a downpour of mercy. Huh? Mercy, anugraha, grace. But this is the function of a real guru, and you can approach a guru, whether he's in the body or not, and get this grace. Uh, or you can find it within yourself. <laughs> but that's advanced. Uh, most of us need help. And so we approach the spiritual master. So the spiritual master can deliver the whole world if they would just listen to him. <laughs> All the afflictions of the world are self-made. All our suffering is self-created. All we have to do is follow the instructions in the Shastra and it's finished. And it can be finished in a very short time. But we have to be sincere, number one. And number two, we have to actually follow the instructions. That's where most people get in trouble. <laughs> but if we follow those instructions... It begins with offering our respectful obeisances to the spiritual master, the guru, in whatever form. Uh -huh. We should be looking out for guru. We should be searching for guru. We should be trying to see guru at every opportunity. Uh, that should be our quest. And if we live like that our whole life, 
Huh? I remember when I was three and a half years old, I started searching for a guru because I wanted to talk with God like Jesus. It took me 24 years to find my guru. And when I did, as soon as I could, I surrendered to him, went to him and served him. That's why I was successful. So the next verse. The Mahaprabhu. The Mahaprabhu is the greatest master. In other words, among spiritual masters, among gurus, there are different grades. Some are higher than others. Some, even though they are personally very, very high, uh, they are teaching on a lower platform. And we've been going through the Chatur Darshanam, so you can understand that, for example, Ramana Maharshi, although he was situated on the Ajatta platform, and another example, similar example, is Shankaracharya, they descended to the Vivartavada platform, and Shankaracharya uh, even occasionally to the Vishishtadvaita platform to benefit the people in general. Because not everybody is ready for Vivartavada sadhana, Raja Yoga. Huh? The Adhikari, the Adhikar means the qualification for Raja Yoga is very, very high. We talked about that in the beginning of the Vedanta Sutra series, which unfortunately <laughs> nobody seems to take much interest in. But that gives the adhikar for actual uh, sadhana on that Raja Yoga level, and it's very, very high. Almost nobody can make it. So people try, and they fall down, they fail, because they're not really qualified. It's too bad. But that's the way life is if you don't have integrity. Huh? If you have integrity, you say, uh-oh, this is too high for me, and you'll go and acquire the qualifications. And that means going to a lower platform like karma yoga or bhakti yoga and perfecting those practices and gaining those qualities and that consciousness. Then you can approach raja yoga successfully. So what is this highest spiritual master? Well, he's always chanting the holy names, dancing in ecstasy, uh -huh. and experiencing ecstatic symptoms in his body. So this is the real spiritual master, uh, not a phony spiritual master. Phony spiritual master is always going to be very serious and dry and just talk and talk and talk and never really give you anything useful. So on this channel, we have tried to bring some heartfulness, some ecstasy into these teachings because if you practice them successfully, you're going to be like overwhelmed with ecstasy. Huh? So there are many ways to attain it. And the best, most reliable way, the easiest way for most people is by chanting. Chanting and dancing offering things to the deity, in other words, bhakti yoga. And before that, karma yoga. We're going to talk extensively about how to practice karma yoga successfully so it sets you up for bhakti. But that's later. So the spiritual master must be a perfect devotee, bhakta. Then on top of that, he has to have perfected the uh, spiritual realization of Brahman. And that's the person you want to seek out. That's the person you want to find and hold on to those lotus feet. Uh, and then finally, we chanted the Gayatri Mantra. And uh, of course, we did a, did a whole series on Gayatri Mantra. So I'm not going to explain that here. But this is our practice every morning or at least the beginning of it, the first stage. And after the prayers to the Guru, come prayers to Ganapati. And we're going to introduce a very nice, uh, beautiful prayer to Ganapati, Ganesh. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.